West Virginia can feel it coming in the air tonight. The Mountaineers waiting for this moment, not all their lives, but at least for the last two years. They remember. It's the backyard brawl. Next. We know what's going on. Okay? I can't even. I can't even tell y'all. We're about to have a fight. One, two, three. One, two, three. in Morgantown, West Virginia. Welcome, everybody, to College Football Primetime with the Pittsburgh Panthers taking on the West Virginia Mountaineers, the 102nd edition of the Backyard Brawl as we take a look at the standings in the Big East. If Pittsburgh wins out, and they got a big one next week against undefeated Cincinnati, Pittsburgh would win its first ever outright Big East championship. West Virginia, meanwhile, at 3-2 and two in conference and play. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Bob, when you look at the headlines, as far as Pittsburgh is concerned, it's like Bruce Springsteen said, glory days. Mark, every coach talks about taking the program to the next level. Pitt is in a position to do that tonight and return to their glory days. Beat West Virginia, they'll have 10 wins for the first time since 1981. Hey, yeah, as far as West Virginia is concerned, James Brown wrote a back payback. They might be thinking about that a little bit. Well, Bill Stewart said it best this week when asked, what's the biggest motivation for West Virginia? He simply said, it's Pitt. Could have talked about rivalry, biggest game of the year. Could have talked about revenge for 07 upset, but Mark, around here, all you have to say, it's Pitt. All right, a cool and crisp night, and we're going to go downstairs to David Ember on the sidelines. David? Uh, Mark, no shortage of bravado. Uh, just a few moments ago as both teams wrapped up the pregame warm-ups, they met at midfield. Uh, this rivalry hit a fever pitch. Uh, they weren't sharing pleasantries and talking about happy Thanksgivings. A lot of harsh words were spoken. It took the coaches and the referees to come and tell the guys, let's forget about it. Let's get it on on the field, not before the game. And I asked a couple of the players afterwards, they said, what was that all about? And they said, hey, quite simply, it's Pittsburgh versus West Virginia, Mark. Certainly a lot of heated emotions, David, down on the field from the coaches, the players, the fans in the stands. These are just a couple of teams, a couple of schools separated by just 70 miles of interstate. Pittsburgh winning the toss and deferring to the second half. Tavon Austin back deep for the Mountaineers along with Mark Rogers for West Virginia. And we are underway. And it bounced out of bounds at the two-yard line. By the kicking team, the ball will be placed at the 40-yard line. First down. Mountaineer is going to get a good start here with their field position. And that's where Jared Brown will take the reins of this offense. Jared Brown completing 65% of his passes. 11 touchdown tosses on the season versus eight interceptions and West Virginia always an option mentality not real strong on the offensive line their motto if you can't block them option them I think you're gonna see a lot of option football tonight Mark and Jared Brown type of guy that can move around a little bit in the pocket he's gonna pass and first of all they're gonna whistle this dead before the ball is even snapped Six offense, five-yard penalty, first down. That's going to go against West Virginia and Selvish Capers. Bob, interesting that both these teams have had a week off to game plan for this and to get a little bit healthier. Exactly, Mark. And, you know, Notre Dame coming off, excuse me, Pittsburgh coming off that huge win at home against Notre Dame in their previous game. West Virginia coming off a tough loss at Cincinnati. Jared Brown completes his first pass at the 34-yard line. 
completing the flat to number nine, Jock Sanders, as we take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by KFC. Well, Noel Devine has been fighting an ankle injury the last three weeks. Even with an ankle injury, he is explosive. Jock Sanders, almost a clone of Noel Devine, and Scooter Berry has had an up-and-down season at defensive end, but he is a talented playmaker. Needs to have a big night tonight. Round to pass again, incomplete this time. Intended for Noel Devine, and uh, yeah, Devine has been nicked up a little bit of late. He hasn't been the healthiest that he's ever been. The last three games, his numbers have been down the result of an ankle injury. But Devine, at his best, a very dominant and uh, explosive type of runner. It'll be third down and long coming up for the Mountaineers. This pit defensive line number one in the country in sacks with 40 sacks on the season. Brown to pass and he's going to be sacked as you mentioned sacked. That's the 41st of the season. Romeus and Sheard getting to Brown. Yeah Greg Romeus the right defensive end. You're going to see him on an inside pass rush. He actually comes from the opposite side. Right there, number 91, kind of a sandwich job with Jabal Sheard, number 97. Two defensive ends, both from the state of Florida. Two of the best pass rushing defensive ends, Mark, maybe in the country. Boy, what started off at the 40-yard line, Bob, for the Mountaineers, all the way back at the 25 now, where they'll punt. Aaron Smith back deep for the Panthers. He's going to watch it bounce at the 37. And it takes a Mountaineer bounce all the way down to the 29-yard line. A 46-yard punt, nothing on the return, and Billy Stoll will take over from there for Pittsburgh. He has been one of the real feel-good stories this year, not only in the Big East Conference, but nationally. The way that he has really stuck it to it and showed a lot of perseverance, including 66% of his passes, 18 touchdown tosses on the season against just four interceptions. Billy Stull, very efficient at quarterback, and it's first and ten for Pittsburgh. Turner in motion. And they hand it off to Deion Lewis, and Lewis is going to be stuffed on the first play of the game. You don't see that happen often. It's going to gain of one on the play. Jillian Miller making the stop. You see some of the emotion, Bob, after the play. Mark, you mentioned the word efficient about Bill Stahl, and that is this Pittsburgh offense. I mean, number three, they've only had nine turnovers all year. They've only given up nine sacks in ten games. Very efficient, very few negative plays by penalty or lost yardage plays. Stahl complete at the 40-yard line. Nice catch on the play by number 82, Jonathan Baldwin, who picks up 10. And let's take a look at the impact players brought to you by KFC for Pitt. Well, the reason Pitt is so good on offense is because they have a lot of impact players and everyone that touches the ball. We talked about Deion Lewis, the true freshman. Doran Dickerson, a combination tight end wide receiver, fullback, their number one wide receiver. And this guy, Jonathan Baldwin does things you cannot coach it's six foot five goes up and gets the deep ball kind of like a former pit receiver Larry Fitzgerald That's pretty good company Deion Lewis still on his feet across midfield and a first down at the 50 yard line he picked up another 10 brought down by Brandon Hogan but Deion Lewis is fourth in the nation in rushing yards out of Albany New York high school there Rushing for almost 1,300 yards on the season. Yeah, and actually, Mark, you know, he grew up in Albany and then went to high school and prep school at Blair Academy, finished up in southern New Jersey. Not very highly recruited. In fact, Tulane and Miami of Ohio, the only two other offers he had. Another first down for Pittsburgh. Stahl is going to take off himself and tiptoe out of bounds at the 47-yard line. He gains about two on the play. Dave Wanstead in his fifth season as the head coach at Pittsburgh. And uh, as far as Wanstead is concerned, it's kind of personal. He played there as a lineman. And he talked about as a player 
They were three and two against West Virginia. And he has several fond memories of his time as a player and now as a coach against West Virginia. Second down and eight. Lewis again dancing outside all the way down to the 33 yard line and another first down pushed out of bounds by Miller picked up 13. A lot of people ask me who does this guy remind you of. He reminds me of Ray Rice not just because he's a Big East tailback not just because of the body type but Mark this guy really really runs hard now. Dave once said talked about seeing just four plays on his highlight tape in high school and said that's it we got to sign him first and ten Pittsburgh lining up out of the eye and once again it's Lewis stuck that time at the 31 yard line good support from the corner spot as Pittsburgh's Hogan comes up pardon me West Virginia's Hogan and Le Leisure making the stop on the play and we take a look at Bill Stewart Bill Stewart's done a good job 17 and 7 since taking over as an assistant needs a signature win really his signature win was when he was the interim coach against Oklahoma in that Fiesta Bowl but since his time as the head coach Mark they have not had a big win this would be a big win tonight. We're going to have to slow this guy down. Lewis again, this time between the tackles, picking up five yards. And, Bob, we've seen something here in the early going with Pittsburgh. You don't see a lot in college football. They line up out of the eye. Great point, Mark. <laughs> You're going to see a unique contrast. And isn't it amazing now that maybe if you line up with a fullback and a power offense, you give defenses nightmares because they don't have an opportunity to practice against that as much. But you're going to see two complete contrasts in West Virginia's spread and what Dave Wanstead calls his dinosaur <laughs> old age offense. Third down and two. Lewis trying to get to the edge and he's set. Brought down for a loss at the 29 yard line. They'll lose about three on the play. Fourth down coming up for the Panthers. JT Thomas making the stop the 6 2 junior and in comes the field goal unit now for Pittsburgh led by Dan Hutchins. Yeah watch JT Thomas run through the backside Mark. He's just going to come around the back door and make the play another one of these Florida players. You know West Virginia has seven starters from the state of Florida. This field goal Hutchins coming from about 46 yards out he's 15 of 18 on the season a high snap and he pushes it off to the right a drive that started off looking very promising ends with no points on the board we'll be right back Thanksgiving greetings from all of us to all of you and this is the Lacey family yesterday here in the Morgantown West Virginia area area folks getting together for Thanksgiving activities which no doubt included some football on the ESPN family and networks and a lot of food interesting to note though as you see the various Lacey family members show up Bob that the pit half of the family no show. <laughs> All right, so we're going to follow so that one throughout me, the course of the night. That's kind of a divided family, is well, what you're saying. That kind of stuff happens over these kind of rivalries. Divine carrying the ball, and there's a flag down on the play. But a good sign. Legal formation. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. First down. It's the second penalty of the ball game against the Mountaineers. Bob, how important is it to have Noel Devine have a productive day for the Mountaineers in this one? Mark, he is the home run threat. I mean, keep in mind, Jock Sanders, number nine, can go back there and play tailback, even though he's the slot receiver. But this guy's the home run threat. Slowed down by an ankle injury the last three games. Some impressive numbers on the season, over 1,000 yards rushing. Brown hands it off. And that's Devine, and he's going to be met right near the line of scrimmage at the 27-yard line. And, Mark, you know that Noel Devine has to be motivated by all the Dion Lewis conversation and talk. 
Penalty against the Mountaineers, their third against Eric Job. And uh, look at the last three games by Devine, averaging just 62 yards rushing. You know, Coach Stewart was effusive in his praise of Devine, talking about how far he'd come as a young man from the time that he first stepped on campus here in Morgantown to where he is now. Yeah, Mark, I mean, one of the most highly recruited players ever, ever to step on the field here at West Virginia. But the penalties right now by West Virginia early in this football game. Yeah, really backing them up. Divine, and it's incomplete. This Mountaineer offense looking a little disconcerted and discombobulated right now. Yeah, Some Mark, penalties. this crowd is obviously really restless. And, you know, it comes back to that kind of leveling off feeling people around Morgantown have. That this program has leveled off, and certainly right now, off to a very, very poor start. Second down and 26. was tipped but caught that's Tavon Austin and you can hear the fans showering the Mountaineers with booze right now that pass was tipped by Romeus at the line of scrimmage it'll be third and long for West Virginia that was a loss of two on the play mark the development of the pit lines both on offense and defense is no surprise. I mean, Dave Wanstead and his association with Jimmy Johnson over the years, you know they're going to develop defensive linemen, and now their offensive linemen also have become dominant. That's the biggest difference in this Pittsburgh program. Pretty good anchors on both sides of the line. Brown hands it off to Devine, running into the boundary, and out of bounds after a gain of three, and it's fourth down in the impatience demonstrated with the booze here from the fans at West Virginia. It'll be fourth down and they'll have to punt. Well, the good news for West Virginia, I'm trying to find some right now. Scott Kozlowski is the number one punter in the Big East at 45 yards, has not had one blocked. Aaron Smith, number three right there, standing at midfield for the Panthers. Kozlowski standing on his own one-yard line. Wow. A line drive that drives Smith all the way back to the 30. Boy, Kozlowski really dug them out of a nice hole right now. And he runs it up to the 34-yard line, Smith does. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, David Amber down at the sidelines. Thanks for coming aboard. This is the 102nd edition of the Backyard Brawl. Bob, people here in Morgantown still talk about 07 when they were number two in the BCS and Pitt came in and upset them. And yeah. it's been role reversal almost ever since. Completely, Mark. I mean, back in 07, West Virginia was dominating the Big East Conference. I mean, they won it in 03, 04, 05, and 07. But since that upset, Pitt is a program on the rise. West Virginia, as I mentioned before, has kind of leveled off, and I think everybody in this tri-state area senses that. Stall going back to pass. Knocked up and incomplete. It was batted to the line of scrimmage by Pat Lazier. And that makes this game tonight pretty simple in some ways. You know, it's about Pitt trying to get to that next level that West Virginia was at. And it's West Virginia, Mark, trying to hang on. And Pitt's in a situation right now, Notre Dame at home, at West Virginia, Cincinnati next week. They can get it to that next level. Level. Pittsburgh trying to win out and earn their first ever outright Big East title. It's not going to be easy, though. Deion Lewis chopped down by Keith Tandy, the 5'10 sophomore. Pittsburgh at nine and one you look at their record if they don't have that bad fourth quarter against North Carolina State they're also in the discussion at 10 and 0 for the BCS third and nine coming up keep your eye on number 82 Jonathan Baldwin mark 
lined up clear at the top six foot five wide receiver a playmaker now stole under pressure and sacked back at the 24. They dialed up a little bit of heat and Julian Miller was the first Mountaineer to get there. That's yeah that's his ninth sack of the year. Julian Miller the defensive end and that's something Pittsburgh has done a tremendous job of doing Mark I mentioned they'd only given up nine sacks for the season coming into this game. And the punt now it's Dan Hutchins. Brandon Hogan back deep along with Jock Sanders for the Mountaineers. And if Pittsburgh has a glaring weakness it is in kick coverage. Net punt they're 101st in the country. So right here the advantage swings to West Virginia with a chance to change field position. Sanders collared at the 40 yard line but it's going to be very auspicious starting field position on this drive for the Mountaineers after the 41 yard punt. ESPN's college football primetime brought to you by Acura. Acura advance and Joseph A. Bank Clothiers, the expert in men's apparel. Another look at the Lacey family here in the Morgantown, West Virginia area. Little guys throwing a football around before the food is ready, and they get ready to chow down on Thanksgiving Day. And take a look at the temperatures here in Morgantown, 35 degrees. Folks, it feels a lot colder. I'm just saying. <laughs> Five and a half minutes to go. In the first quarter. Jared Brown and Brown brought down at the line of scrimmage. Quarterback play so important in the type of system, Bob, obviously, that they run. And Jared Brown suffered a concussion a few games ago against Marshall. And he really kind of struggled in the ensuing games. But the last game, albeit a loss against Cincinnati, they felt that he got back on track. Yeah, and just off to a slow start. I mean this West Virginia football team you saw that graphic nine minus nine yards three penalties early in this game. Brown keeps it again and this time a better run gets about six on the play brought down by Dom DeChico. This guy right here I've got a lot of respect for him. you know waited his turn Mark he's a 50 year senior sat behind Pat White a lot of people you know how it goes family members high school teammates tell you to leave you should be going somewhere else starting somewhere else he tuned all that out and you can't help but be pulling for a guy like this in his last game in Mountaineer Stadium 21 seniors playing for the final time here Brown one of them competes the pass to Jock Sanders for the first down on pit side of midfield picking up eight yards Adam Gunn making the stop for Pittsburgh yeah and you're talking about two great games this weekend now Notre Dame Stanford a lot of intrigue obviously because of the coaching situation in Georgia Georgia Tech and yeah, what about that option <laughs> hey, Paul Johnson going to put that option on Georgia and the Bulldogs. Bulldogs coming off a tough loss last week at home against Kentucky. On the reverse this time, Bradley Stark still on his feet. And another Mountaineer first down at the 36. He picked up 13 on the play. Bradley Starks, one of the fastest wide receivers on the roster. Yeah, Mark, he was a quarterback in high school. Comes on the reverse right now. Well designed play and it's amazing since that missed field goal by Pittsburgh momentum even though it's early has swung to West Virginia. Brown on the quarterback option keeps it himself. And they're going to say that his knee touched all the way back at the 34 yard line that would make it a three yard gain. Mick Williams making the stop for Pittsburgh. Mark, I mentioned there's going to be a lot of option. What it makes you do, watch the defensive end, Jabal Sheard right here. 
Watch him get up the field. It takes away the aggressiveness of those outstanding defensive ends from Pittsburgh. They're going to make them play out of their comfort zone tonight. They're going to make them play option football all night long. The give is to Divine that time. And Divine right into Sheard. He picked up about three on the play. Now we come back. We're going to look at Sheard again. Watch how in his second step, now he flattens out, Mark, closes down and makes the play. But you know what those defensive ends really like to do? Rush the pass. They like to <laughs> run up that field. And that's why I say you kind of are out of your comfort zone. And if you can't block them, optional. And that's a great way to say it. Looking at a third down and five. Ryan Clark in the game in the backfield. Jared Brown's going to keep it. Got a blocker in front of him. And he picks up the first down for the Mountaineers. Down to the 24-yard line. Jared Brown, known to his teammates as Jay Brizzle, picking up seven. You know, they talk about his disposition. He's a quiet guy, but his play's doing all the talking now. Yeah, another predetermined quarterback run. Big Lions at about six foot eight. Big wide receiver from Western PA. Getting a little bit of that backyard brawl going right there, huh? Took on someone his own size, I mean, but he's 6'8. At, Mark, look at the size distribution out here at wide receiver <laughs> between these guys. On the receiver screen, the pass complete. That's Tavon Austin. And Austin made a nice move on the play to elude the tackle of Elijah Fields. And you talk about the original Smurfs. You know, West Virginia, Rich Rodriguez. When you talk about Noel Devine, Jock Sanders, Tavon Austin, they are the Smurfs now. You know, the 5'7", 165 pounds. And then you got big Lions at six foot eight. Quite a contrast right there. Tough to see those little guys sometimes. <laughs> Hand off right up the middle to Ryan Clark. And Clark makes it inside the 10-yard line for another West Virginia first down. And I know Dave Wanstead was worried. This game is almost a trap game for Pittsburgh. Beat Notre Dame at home. Whether they win or lose, they're playing Cincinnati, Mark, for the Big East Championship next Saturday in Pittsburgh. You have to say it helps West Virginia just the way this game fits. On first and goal. Clark this time sacked behind the line of scrimmage at the 11-yard line. Bob, yeah, you talked about Dave Wanstead trying to put an edge on his players this week. He talked to them and showed them a little bit of video of one of the last times they played the Mountaineers when West Virginia players, after the game, walked over to their sideline and started eyeballing them some. <laughs> Got to use every little well, tactic you can. Bill Stewart took his team to see the blind side, the movie uh, other night. So it's some combative <laughs> psychological warfare going on this week with the movie flicks, huh? 11th play of the drive around the edge. Sanders. Jock Sanders using that speed and that burst to make it inside the five yard line. He got eight on the play. It's going to be third and goal coming up for West Virginia. And you have to tackle in space. I mean, when you play West Virginia, they're going to find a way to get those to get the ball to those little guys out there in space. You take a look at Bill Stewart. What he's fighting a little bit, Mark, is, you know, Rich Rodriguez when he was here. West Virginia associates success with that. And Rich Rodriguez was hands on and had a real vocal style on that sidelines. Bill Stewart is not that guy. But things going well right now early for the Mountaineers. Back with the second quarter right after this. Welcome back, everyone, to Morgantown, West Virginia. Here's what's happening now. And this is the 102nd meeting between Pittsburgh and West Virginia. Pittsburgh's won the last two in a row. What's coming up ahead? Well, we'll tell you how the 07 game had a multiple school changing phenomenon attached to it. And then later in Davy Jones locker, we dig deep into our chest and talk about patience. Third down and goal coming up for West Virginia. 
Chuck Sanders the inside receiver to the bottom of your screen the leading receiver for the Mountaineers. Brown keeps it himself and he's not going to make it. Jared Brown stopped up at the two yard line by Greg Romeus. Mark not much surprise to that play. When you see Jared Brown back there is the only back in an empty formation. It's going to be quarterback run. Well you look at the big picture of this West Virginia Bob at seven and three fourth down they're going to go for it. Yeah Ryan Clark the freshman at about 228 pounds number 32. He is their power back Mark. They also have Ricky Kovacs number 41 a fullback in the game. So this is their power offense right here. Fourth and goal. Brown looking to throw. And sacked back at the 12 yard line. The Pittsburgh defense responding. Gus Mustakis getting there first. So the Panthers roar first. And Pittsburgh takes over on downs from their own 11. Back under the lights in Morgantown. Zeros on the scoreboard, Bob. Why would West Virginia go for it on fourth and goal? Like you that? know, Mark, I think it's out of respect for the Pittsburgh offense. I mean, Pittsburgh comes in averaging about 34 points a game offensively. I think it's out of respect that Pitt's going to score some points tonight. You know, so you always second guess, why don't you get the points? But he knows this is going to end up being a fairly high scoring game, I think. The tune would have to change pretty quickly, and they change running backs. That's the other freshman, a talented one, too, Ray Graham. Stopped up for a loss on the play once again by J.T. Thomas. He'll lose a couple of yards. It'll be second down and about 12 coming up. Mark, we saw this earlier. Watch right here. J.T. Thomas again is going to run through the backside. You know, it's the same exact play. Pitt loves to run that power to the strong side. And when that backside linebacker runs through, that backside offensive tackle has a tough time cutting him off right there. That's happened twice tonight. Stall fires it. It's going to be complete. They're going to spot it at about the 15-yard line. Doran Dickerson making the catch. He picked up six. Yeah, and the big question on West Virginia's defense coming in, Mark, how would they play against the run? You know, the last three games, they've given up a bunch of yards in the running game. Really playing well right now early in this game. You know, the first series, Pittsburgh had some success. Since that missed field goal by Pitt, though, it's been all West Virginia's defense. Third and six. Incomplete intended once again for Dickerson. This time, he couldn't hang on to it. He was covered by Robert Sands. And it's three and out for the Panthers on this sequence. So far, the West Virginia Mountaineer defense responding, allowing just 40 yards and racking up one sack so far. Their defense is going to have to play well against a very potent, balanced offense of Pittsburgh. That's Jock Sanders back at his own 43 along with Brandon Hogan. Low snap, but Hutchins grabs it. Sanders at the 40. And Jock Sanders up to the 45. There's a flag on the far side of the field after the 45 yard punt. Six yards on the return. Yeah, unfortunate again for West Virginia. Another penalty mark because they had excellent field position Going right here. Tech, holding number 10 on the return team. 10 yard penalty. First down. All right, we're going to take a timeout. Zeros on the board. And when we come back, you can't mention 2007 to Mountaineer fans. We'll tell you why on the other side. Had on that guy right there, Dave Wanstead, who told us that immediately after the game, in the next couple of days, they ended up signing eight highly touted recruits for the program. Here we go on first down and 10. That pass complete. 
at the 35 yard line. Bob, it was interesting that there were players that were making their Mountaineer visit here, ended up leaving and signing with Pitt. Well, I think the greatest story, Jonathan Baldwin, who was super highly recruited out of Aliquippa, texted Dave once that after the game, and this is when he was still undecided, and said, we did it. We beat him. So Dave once that felt pretty good right then that that game made a huge impact. Nice second and four. Nice run by Noel Devine, and we go down to David Amber for more. Uh, Mark, you mentioned the 2007 game. I talked to the Panthers quarterback, Bill Stull, about it. He said it was a great feeling to win, but they were a little scared after. He said in the bus on the way out of the stadium, they didn't, weren't sure they were going to get out of here because they were getting pelted by presumably by uh, West Virginia fans with rocks and with beer bottles. The bus was, and he said he turned to Coach Wanstead and kind of gave him this scared look, and Coach just shrugged and said, hey, we're in West Virginia. Wait till we get back. And luckily they did. He had drive where sometimes emotions Go a little bit over the top. First down and 10. Brown complete. Number 82, Arnett making the catch. Mark, you know, to go back to that story, you have to give Mark Nordenberg, the chancellor at Pittsburgh, a lot of credit because going into that game, Dave Wanstead was under a lot of heat. They didn't have an AD. The AD had left and gone to Arkansas. Mark Nordenberg gave him an extension before the game. And I think the key now for Pitt and Mark Nordenberg and Steve Peterson, keep this guy and really make a commitment to the program. They've got the right coach. Keep the coaches intact and go to the next level. And Steve Peterson, the athletic director, he knows what it yeah. takes. He's been to Nebraska. He's been at Tennessee. So they have the right guy in place. He had the foresight back in 07 to extend it. Keep these guys because they are headed in the right direction. Divine getting us both a couple of yards on that last play, and uh, it was interesting. They only ended up five and seven that year, albeit that win against West Virginia really made their season. And we'll talk a little bit more about the domino effect that win had on various coaching positions around the country later on in Davy Jones locker. Third and nine. Brown open over the middle to the 39 yard line and another first down. West Lions picked up 20 and Jared Brown getting up slowly. Well, we talked about the big six foot seven, six foot eight West Lions. He's going to be right here. He's just going to come down and run a little curl route, Mark. Wide open right there in the middle of that zone coverage. And Brown took a hit from Romeus. Been a tough year for Jared Brown. First down and 10. Devine trying to bounce it to the outside. Well, Devine pushed out of bounds, and Mountaineer fans looking for a late hit on the play. That was Giovanni Happel. Chapel. Yeah, you can see what they're upset about. Watch late right there. Chapel. You know, not vicious, Mark. But clearly was out of bounds when he took him down to the ground. Gain of five on the play. It'll be second down and five. Ryan Clark in a tailback. Brown going up top. And incomplete. Little stop and go intended for Bradley Starks. You know, quarterback Jared Brown is a man of many talents. Passing and handing off the football among them and doing a little runway modeling from time to time, Bob Davey. I mean, uh, it's pretty diverse talent. I mean, does footwork on the on the catwalk help you out in the backfield? I'll tell you, man, you, you know his teammates have to be just unmerciful. Unmerciful when they see the shots of him going down that catwalk. Third down and five. Well, the Tyson Beckford of quarterbacks completes that pass. That's Austin making the catch. And he picks up six close to the first down. Let's see where they spot it. It's like they're going to give it to him. This Tavon Austin, Mark, a true freshman out of Maryland. 
number one. He is another guy. He went to West Virginia because he loved the way they took advantage of the talents of those smaller running backs. But very impressive right here. Jared Brown setting his feet, getting some pass protection, which is something we haven't seen this year out of West Virginia. Brown eluding harm's way. The pass complete at the 27-yard line to Devine. Well, on ESPN's Monday Night Football, Tom Brady in New Orleans taking on Drew Brees and the Saints. Two of the top teams battle in the Big Easy and try to make a huge statement in Week 12. Patriots Saints on ESPN's Monday Night Football at 8.30 Eastern Time. Coverage beginning with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's at 7. Boy, that is a great game. That doesn't need a whole lot of promotion no. now. <laughs> Handoff this time. That's going to be Devine brought down by Williams. Bob, are you surprised by how well West Virginia has moved the ball against a very staunch pit defense for most of the year? Mark, I mean, good play calling, getting the ball out in space, a lot of fake reverse action. And Jared Brown's made a couple of third down completions. I mean, this is a good West Virginia offense when Jared Brown is playing efficiently. I mean, he's a talented quarterback with a talented set of skill guys out there. Looking at third and long, nine to go. Brown downfield and overshoots his man out of bounds. Showed you a little bit of arm strength that time. It was intended for Bradley Starks. And it's fourth down coming up for West Virginia. Hit with two potential NFL defensive ends, Mark. Watch Romeus. Where the heck is he? I think he's over here. Watch him on the pass rush area. He's coming from the top. Just an excellent speed rusher. There's the other one, Jabal Sheard. Two future NFL pass rushers. Both of them defensive ends. Both of them only juniors. And both of them from Florida. A hey, fourth down, Bob, and Mountaineers going for it again for the second time tonight. Last time they didn't make it from the two yard line on fourth and goal. And we got a timeout on the field called by West Virginia. We'll take one with them and come right back after this. ESPN's College Football Primetime brought to you by Audi, Truth in Engineering, and Wrangler for unbeatable comfort and value. You can count on Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. A look at the Lacey family here in Morgantown, West Virginia yesterday. Getting their grub on, getting ready for the big Thanksgiving dinner. Back here in Morgantown, zeros on the scoreboard. Fourth down coming up for the Mountaineers. We're one of seven on fourth downs this year. And West Virginia just doesn't kick a lot of field goals, Mark. They've only tried nine all season. Brown trying to do it himself, and he won't get it. For the second time tonight, the Pittsburgh defense stones them. This time, Jabal Sheard leading the way, and good pressure up front, too, by Greg Romeus. That's yeah. the second sack of the night yeah, for Mark. Pittsburgh. Both defensive ends. Watch again the inside move. Also, the ability of Jared Brown, but again, he needs to put that football away. You know, we saw him at Auburn where he had just numerous turnovers, but West Virginia's offensive line, they play like they are a young offensive line. They have no chance in pass protection against these defensive ends. First and 10 coming back the other way on downs. Stole to pass into traffic, but caught. That is the spectacular type of pyrotechnics provided by Jonathan Baldwin very frequently this year. 19 yards on the catch. Well, Mark, I said earlier, this guy does things you cannot coach. I mean, he is six foot five, runs about a 4440, tremendous vertical leap. I mean, like a 42 inch vertical. Could have gone to Really didn't need the vertical right yeah. there. Could have <laughs> kept those cleats on the ground. But he is a talent now and only a sophomore. Up near midfield at the 46. Stole with the play fake. Going up top once again for Baldwin. And it's incomplete. Baldwin working against number 22, Brandon Hogan. And Bob, you talked about Baldwin's athletic gifts. 
He could have gone to Marquette on a basketball scholarship with his dynamic nature physically. Yeah, Mark, he's from Aliquippa. Been a lot of players from Aliquippa. But the pressure right here, the pressure caused Bill Stahl. Reed Williams on the linebacker blitz. He was never able to set his feet. Never let Jonathan Baldwin get any separation on the defensive back. There's another guy, a uh, Dorsett guy or something. He was from Aliquippa, yeah, wasn't but he? Yeah, how about Mike Ditka now? <laughs> You're right, Tony Dorsett. But he played at Hopewell High School. Mike Ditka's the original Aliquippa quip, though, that started the pit connection. Second down and 10. Lewis carrying it. Bob, you know your Pittsburgh inside and out uh, growing up in the area and want to send a uh, belated Thanksgiving wishes out to uh, your dad Bob senior got a chance to visit with him yesterday huh yeah thank you Mark it's yeah. very nice of you and yeah I had a chance to fly into Pittsburgh yesterday and spend Thanksgiving with my dad we went out to dinner last night and uh, I really enjoyed it. in fact he's got that new HD TV oh he's on it he now. broke oh. down and bought so he's <laughs> watching this tonight in <laughs> sparkling HD now uh, yeah, bitches, he's seen a few of these West Virginia Pittsburgh matchups. Third down and eight coming up. Backside pressure, Stahl got it away, and Baldwin at the other end of it making the catch for the first down at the 34 yard line. And here what's happen here's what's happening now. First down and ten. For Pittsburgh, no score in the game. Pittsburgh trailing the Mountaineers in time of possession, but Bill. Bill Stewart's crew with no points to show for it. And uh, boy, what a transformation. We'll talk about it ahead. The Big East has made over the years. And later, a freshman uh, dominating the landscape, making an impact across the college football landscape. I'll tell you about that as well. About five and a half minutes to go in the first half. Stoll. Tried that back shoulder pass intended for Baldwin, incomplete. You talk about Bill Stahl, Mark, you know, and you talk about I'm from Pittsburgh. I realize the pressure on a guy like Bill Stahl, who went to high school in Pittsburgh, a long career as the pit quarterback, had some struggles, had some ups and downs, booed last year, but booed this year early against Youngstown State. You're in a pro sports town. When you're in a quarterback in a place like Pittsburgh, a lot of pressure on a young guy, but man, he has survived it. Yeah, he's been through more scrutiny than arguably any other player here at Pittsburgh over the last four years. On second and ten, a little heat dialed up. Stoll delivers a strike. Boy, what a throw. He threw that before Shanahan, his intended receiver, even made his break. An eight-yard gain on the play. Mark, you said it. I mean, that's an NFL kind of throw and catch right there. That little back shoulder stop route. And yeah, that's big Mike Shanahan at about six foot five that got that. Freshman, we better say it, no relation <laughs> to the Mike Shanahan now, the former Bronco coach. Third and three. On their defense has been able to hold up when it had to so far tonight. And the Panthers are going to go call the timeout and talk about it. And we'll take one right along with them. With 4.46 to go in the first half, we'll be right back. Welcome back under the lights in Morgantown, West Virginia. Zeros on the scoreboard. Pittsburgh with the football in that 07 game. Really, Bob, if you look at it in the big picture, set off a ripple effect in the coaching ranks, didn't it? Exactly. I mean, the first one, you have to wonder, you know, if West Virginia wins that football game, they're playing in the national championship game. Does Rich Rodriguez leave at that time, West Virginia, and go to Michigan? Would Les Miles have gone from LSU to Michigan? And we can keep going down that tree of the what ifs if West Virginia would have won that game. Nice run around the end by Dion Lewis. And Lewis gets the first down for the Panthers with a nice burst. He squared those shoulders. He picked up four. And uh, boy, you never know who won, a, won the national championship that year. Uh, you think about the turbulence at the time down in Baton Rouge. Les Miles, was he? Wasn't he going to? Michigan there was a lot of speculation at the time he had to come out and make an announcement prior to their big game saying that he wasn't going anywhere 
But I will say this. I was at the West Virginia-Oklahoma game in the Fiesta Bowl, and West Virginia played one of the best football games I've ever seen under Bill Stewart that night and won that game. On first and ten, almost picked off. It should have been picked off by Robert Sands. Yeah, he tried to force that one to Jonathan Baldwin, Mark. But if you're going to force it to him, get it up high enough where only Jonathan Baldwin can make the catch. But watch Sands kind of lurking right there. Poorly thrown ball. I mean, throw that ball over the top of everyone and let him go up and extend. But don't underthrow that ball. Robert Sands talked about watching that game in 07, how... He didn't even have West Virginia on his radar. He visited Pitt after Pitt had beaten West Virginia. People were still talking about that big win. And here's Dion Lewis one more time, and Lewis runs it over the left side of the offensive line, and he has just set a Big East freshman rushing record. If this stands, and we got a little extra activity down on the field, and they're saying maybe there was a fumble. before he lost control of the ball. Dave, Dave's agreeing with that. <laughs> yeah, <real laughs> kind quick. of wishful thinking right there. Dave gave that little agreement with the... Going to mark it at the 20-yard line. Yeah, let's take, take a look again, Mark, and see what all that scuffling was about late. Yeah, the official saying that his forward progress was stopped, though. Yeah. yeah, there were about four Mountaineers hanging off of him at that point. So third down and eight coming up. And with that run, Lewis, as I said, just hit a Big East freshman rushing record, passing former Panther LaShawn McCoy. Doran Dickerson, number two, that tight end, Mark. You see him lined up at tight end. He's been quiet so far. Stole into the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Baldwin. Baldwin and Kent Richardson jawing at each other a little bit, and Bill Stewart enthusiastically urging on his teammates. His team, pardon me, fourth down coming up. And Hutchins attempting a field goal. This one's going to come from about 37 yards away. He missed one earlier from 46, which would have been. A career long, his career long is 45. Still looking for the game's first points. And we just got him. Yeah, Mark, strange things happen in this game. Always a lot of little push and shove and John. Probably natural with any rivalry. But let's take a look here late with Jonathan Baldwin. Get a little push. Is that a fan? <laughs> Someone on the sideline. Yeah, somebody got a little push that wasn't in a West Virginia uniform right there. That wasn't much, though. Everyone's a little testy, though, about yeah. this kind of situation. You know, Jonathan Baldwin's dad, Jeff Baldwin, was a defensive lineman at Pittsburgh. But Pitt gets on the board right here. Hey, Saturday night, ABC and ESPN2 deliver two full national games. First, Notre Dame against Stanford, or you can see Georgia take on Georgia Tech. Both games can be seen nationally on either ABC or ESPN2. Go to ESPN.com, search maps to find the game you want to watch. Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, or college football primetime on ESPN at 8. Great weekend of Turkey and college football, Bob Davey. You are right, in Alabama, big scare today from the Auburn Tigers. We have Florida, Florida State tomorrow, and then tomorrow night, Mark, those two great football games. From the 13-yard line, it's Tavon Austin. And Austin pushed out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Got 3.15 to play in the first half, and coming up next on the college football halftime report, Alabama barely escaping against Auburn. It took a last-minute drive. Tony Pike thriving today. His boy Cincinnati, a well-oiled machine right now, and Tiger Woods' update on his car accident. 
And these last two drives for West Virginia, Mark, 13 plays 49 yards, 12 plays 44 yards, but no points. You go back to that decision not to kick the field goal. Here's Devine on first down and 10 out near the 35-yard line. As we approach three minutes to go, a pickup of four on the play. And there's Noel Devine, a young man who has overcome a lot of adversity in his life from the Florida area and struck up a good relationship when he was younger with Deion Sanders, formerly of the Dallas Cowboys and Falcons in the NFL. Played a solid and positive mentorship role with him. That pass incomplete intended for Jock Sanders. Mark, this game, I mentioned West Virginia's offensive line playing like a young offensive line. I don't know if I've ever heard a stat like this. They've had the same offensive linemen. Those same five guys have taken every snap this entire season. How every you, snap. That's got to be unique, right? That's unique. <laughs> but their problem is pass protection. And right now, if you're Pitt, Big advantage with those two defensive ends now. Third and six. Brown tucks that ball away and is brought down at the 35 yard line. He picked up one, but it'll be fourth down and five to go. Gus Mustakis making the stop for the Panthers. Yeah, we talk about those two defensive ends, but also Gus Mustakis and Mick Williams, the other defensive tackle. Mustakis, another guy from Florida. Mark, three of their front four are out of the state of Florida. You take a look at Greg Caduso right there. You know, the coordinators get a lot of credit. Phil Bennett has done an outstanding job, as has Frank Signetti. But I think this Pittsburgh defensive line under Greg Caduso has really improved. Yeah, these two defensive ends are both going to be big-time NFL players. Jabal Sheard and Greg, Greg Romeus. But I go back to the development of these defensive linemen. Greg Gattuso, they have an outstanding weight coach in Buddy Morris. And on the offensive side, Tony Weiss, their offensive line coach, is one of the best in the country. And an NFL offensive line coach at the Cowboys, the Dolphins, also the Jets, but between Tony Wise and Greg Catuso, two excellent off it, two excellent line coaches. Aaron Smith back deep. A line drive spiral all the way down to the 22. And Smith running east-west and turns it up to about the 29-yard line. It'll be first down and 10. 43 yards on the punt. Seven on the return. And that's where Pitt will start things off. Billy Stoll with a little over 224. 224 to go here in the first half. You know, not many points. Last two years, 07, it was 13-9 Pittsburgh. Last year, 19-15. But, Mark, I got to tell you, I'm surprised right now. I mean, these are two talented offenses. A lot of credit to this West Virginia defense hanging in there against Pittsburgh right now. Stall complete through a dart that time to Cedric McGee. A good looking pass, good for six yards. And, uh, you know, talking about Stall, it, his evolution goes back to last year, that 3 0 loss in the Sun Bowl game. Interesting that. Bob, you talked about the support of the administration here that the players and the coaches get. Stull received a phone call the next day from Pittsburgh's chancellor, Mark Nordenberg, and the athletic director, Steve Peterson. And they told him that they still believed in his abilities and his talent. That kind of thing can go a long way for a young kid. That's a great story. And that says a lot about the administration at Pittsburgh. Now, that's the kind of guys you want to be a head coach for. Out of the backfield. Complete. Nice move. Deion Lewis, though, brought down. Good run support, pardon me, on the pass by Keith Tandy. And, Mark, we also have to talk about Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator that came in this year, his first year. His dad, former head coach at West Virginia, assistant coach at Pittsburgh. Frank Signetti has done an outstanding job coming in because all these weapons were in place at Pittsburgh prior to this season, but he has taken advantage of those weapons. Third and four. Stall picked 
picked off at the 45 by Tandy. And West Virginia has a first and 10 at the 40 yard line for Tandy. It's his third interception of the year. And the Mountaineers in business with a minute to go here in the half. Well, Mark, we talk about efficiency, how efficient Bill Stahl is. That's only his fifth interception of the year. Didn't look like he ever saw Keith Tandy. I mean, Tandy just sunk underneath that thing playing zone coverage. Again, he tried to force that ball to Jonathan Baldwin, but got a little bit carried away there, Mark. But West Virginia with excellent field position and a chance to do something here before this half. Uh, Mountaineers with a couple of timeouts remaining, 103 to go. Nothing wrong with forcing the ball to Jonathan Baldwin, but get it up in the air where he's the only one that can catch it. Brown completes this one. The short side of the field, number 82, Brown Arnett. Arnett out of bounds at the 32-yard line, picked up eight. Second down and two. They got those two timeouts remaining, the Mountaineers do. Alric Arnett. That's Jared Brown's roommate, so those two often on the same frequency. Brown incomplete at the 29. That one intended for Bradley Stark. So it's third down and two to go. Bill Stewart says that I've got the best and the greatest team chemistry ever. Talked about the dedication of this team over the last couple of weeks. Yet to pay off on the scoreboard. This is divine. Oh, tiptoes out of bounds. And you got that kind of quickness. You can pick up the first down, which he did. He got three. And Mark, you also see right there on third down, West Virginia wasn't going to kick a field goal now because they've only tried nine field goals all year. But you are right. I mean, Noel Devine, even with that ankle, you hold your breath every time he touches it if you're on the other side now. First down from just inside the 30. Brown sets his feet and fires a dart once again to start. This one is caught at the 18-yard line. And Mark, that was great pass protection right there by the left offensive tackle, Barkley. Only a sophomore. Watch him right there on 91, Romeus. That's really good pass protection. Jared Brown a chance to set his feet and deliver the strike. Picked up 11. Incomplete. He threw that one away, it looked like. And he had a couple receivers in the neighborhood. Yeah, again, Mark, I mean, he gets a little jumpy now. He's taken a lot of sacks this year. Really a pretty good decision right now because that was only first down. Coaches sometimes say that they'd like to see a little bit more voice, a little more noise from Brown, but he's just not that type of guy. He'd rather let his game do the talking for him. Little receiver screen complete. Down to the 10-yard line, Jock Sanders picks up eight. Well, anytime those Smurfs get the ball, somebody has to block. And that's the role of the big 6'8 West Lions. He's going to come out. You're going to see the big guy right here. Watch him go out and be the blocker on this jailbreak screen, Mark. Kind of a big basketball player, right? That's kind of a pick. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing vicious about uh, it, but uh, it was a pick. Cool. That's cool. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. You talk about the intense feelings from both teams in this backyard brawl rivalry. John Sanders prior to the game, and our sideline reporter David Amber chronicled some of it before the game was Sanders was looking at one of the pit players not in uniform who had said something to him and I overheard Sanders say well why don't you get dressed then why don't you get dressed <laughs> yeah. well how about the motivation though I got it you know Bill Stewart no classes this week at West Virginia takes his seat team to see the blind side the great Michael Orr movie correct with some current NCAA coaches in it and Sandra Bullock right. Then last night, as a lot of teams do, really one of the most emotional things programs do, they had each senior get up and speak. 
and just let their guts hang out yeah. Mark in front of their teammates and coaches and as coaches you thank those senior players for all their work and sacrifices over the years third and two Brown hands it off and a first down at the two yard line Noel Devine they got to work with the clock here and keep that in mind with one timeout remaining picked up nine they got to hurry and the whistle blows and try and get the different group on they spiked it yeah watch this run by divine on the prior play mark you talk about making angles change he just runs by two guys right there ball at the one yard line Mountaineers with one timeout remaining. Yeah, their big power back, I believe, Ryan Clark in the football game. They line up in the eye. Oh, man. That kills you right there. A penalty seemingly against. Yeah, they're going to get a false start, West Tony, Virginia. on the left offensive guard, Josh Jenkins. Again, he's a freshman. 63290 a freshman out of Parkersburg they play like they are a young offensive line watch them flinch right there coach wasn't too happy about that interesting call right here that's their fifth penalty of the night mark they do have a timeout they can get a couple plays off here Brown looking into the end zone takes off and the hole closed real quickly on Jared Brown. Williams and Romeus making the stop. And the Mountaineers use their final time out of the half with eight seconds to go in the half. Tyler Bittencourt in to attempt a field goal from 20 yards out. And he knocks it through to knock the game at three apiece. With eight seconds to go in the first half of play, Bill Stewart emotional with his team. He's been talking about the feelings involved for his 21 seniors coming into this game all week long. Yeah, Mark, and that all started. Let's go back to the interception by Keith Tandy. Bill Stahl trying to force the football to Jonathan Baldwin. Both coaches uh, pretty upbeat about that last field goal for different reasons, probably. Dave wants said the former player, and you have to be so excited for Dave Wanstead. You know, Mark, you mentioned played at Pittsburgh, coached at Pittsburgh. To see his plan now take place and get Pitt back to where they were in the late 70s when they won a national yeah. championship under Johnny Majors and then under Jackie Sherrill 79 80 and 81 11 and 1 three straight seasons 33 and 3 and this program on the verge of getting back to that point but they are in a fist fight tonight in Morgantown Pittsburgh off to its best start since 1982 harken back to the days of Dan Marino, even before that, Bob, you mentioned some of the great players, the Hugh Greens and Tony Dorsett's of college football. On the return, this is Sadler. And Sadler with a nice return, albeit maybe a little too late to end the first half. Dave Wanstead's team looking for its third consecutive win against West Virginia in this, the 102nd edition of the Backyard Brawl. And we go downstairs to David Amber with Coach Stewart. Coach Stewart, what went into that decision? Uh, third down to kick the field goal. Well, time on the clock, 8.8. .8. We had a, we had a first in, uh, at the one-yard line there. Unbelievable. Had a jump, a middle mistake. A young man won't make it again. I'm sure he's, you know, so he had to kick the ball. Offensively, what adjustments would you like to see in the second half from your offense? I'd like to see our offense play like our defense is playing. We need more on first down. All right, thank you, thank Coach. You. A pretty succinct summarization by Coach Stewart. Threes on the scoreboard of the break as we throw it back to the studio with Reese, Mark, and Lou. Guys, belated happy Thanksgiving.
defense is dominating the first half of play here in the 102nd chapter of the backyard brawl between Pittsburgh and West Virginia. Welcome back to college football primetime. Pittsburgh Panthers taking on the West Virginia Mountaineers, knotted at three. Each team with a field goal in the first half. Pittsburgh trying to make it three straight against their rivals from Morgantown. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, David Ember down in the field on the sidelines. Thanks for coming aboard as we go deep inside Davey Jones locker this <laughs> week and talk about really how the virtue of patience can really pay off for football teams, especially Pittsburgh. It's that time of year, right? Yeah. <laughs> you get uh, late November, early December. I mean, that coaching carousel starts to spin around. Fans, administrators, everybody gets a little bit impatient. It's probably a good time to talk about it. We talked about Dave Wanstead earlier. The last two, last times these two teams played down here in 07, he was about on the chopping block. But because they were patient, look what that's evolved into. But certainly with the situation in Notre Dame swirling around right now, you look at the situations at Iowa with Kirk Ferentz, patience, what it did for that program. You look at Virginia Tech with Frank Beamer early in his career. Mark, we could go on and on, but patience certainly played off, paid off for Pittsburgh, and the same thing maybe for West Virginia. Bill Stewart, 17 and seven, fans a little bit restless, but Mark, winning a game like this tonight goes a long way, just like Dave Wanstead proved two years ago. And 07, that was his signature win. And Bill Stewart of the Mountaineers as its head coach now, still in search of what many would deem his first signature win. Pittsburgh gonna get the ball to start the second half here. Mark Pitt with only 98 yards offense in the first half. They only had 27 plays. West Virginia kept the football 43 plays. West Virginia just couldn't score, but moved the football pretty well. This is Ray Graham, the talented freshman on the kickoff return. He's going to be stopped up at the 23-yard line. And let's take a look at our first half stats brought to you by American Airlines. Well, I think the biggest thing, Mark, is just the 131 yards for West Virginia. They really had three big drives the last three times they had the football. Only scored three points. The five penalties right there for West Virginia really hurt them, particularly early in the game. And look at Pitt, two of seven on third down. West Virginia that first half going for it a couple of times on fourth down as well. Boy, nimble feet, good quickness by Dion Lewis, but he's brought down by Pat Lazier. Picked up three on the play. Yeah, Mark, one thing we talk about all the time is ball protection, high and tight. That is the opposite wow. of high and tight. That's low and loose. <laughs> that is amazing right there. The young, may I say, freshman, Ray Graham. Was he looking to hand that off to somebody? No. <laughs> <laughs> he better have stick them on those gloves now. That'll drive Dave once they crazy. Unbelievable. This is Dion Lewis. And Lewis. Makes it up to the 24. It'll be third down and about six coming up. Yeah, Ray Graham is the backup tailback to Deion Lewis. Bob, you think he'd be clued in to the whole concept of ball security? Well, sometimes bit. it's like that little kid that you tell him, don't touch that fire. Okay. Don't touch that fire, but what's he have to do? Yeah, you got he has to touch it, right? <laughs> He's going to have to cough one of those up until he learns that hard lesson. But right now, this West Virginia defense and this West Virginia crowd, they're smelling a little bit, Mark. Got Baldwin down at the bottom. That's where Bill Stahl likes to take that football. And this is Heat. Stahl delivers incomplete. Broken up nicely by this free safety, Robert Sands. A good pressure by Reed Williams again on Bill Stahl. Reed Williams, Mark, really the heart and soul of this West Virginia defense. He's a tough guy. Watch him coming right there. Guy has been hurt a lot this year. Had two torn labrums last year. Comes back this year and of all things goes down with a turf toe. But West Virginia, great start to the second half. Williams, Ooh. mom and coach both went to 
West Virginia University. Nice punt, which takes a Pittsburgh bounce, and it will continue to bounce all the way down to the 25 yard line. That's where Jared Brown's going to start things off for the Mountaineers in the third quarter here. A 50 yard punt, nothing on the return. Coaches felt that Jared Brown really got his game together and got his game back for the first time since suffering that concussion against Marshall several games ago. They felt that he played extraordinarily well, albeit in a loss against Cincinnati a couple of weeks ago. Young man that waited a long time to, to become the starter here at Morgantown. This is Ryan Clark still on his feet and churning forward all the way up to the 34 yard line. Nice run by Clark on the second effort picked up about eight. Yeah, you can see why he's the power back. You know West Virginia struggled red zone early in the season taking advantage of Ryan Clark a freshman market about 230 pounds. Second down at about two. to Clark again stopped up by the guys inside Mick Williams and Mustakas and David Amber what did Dave Wanstead talk about at halftime well he said he told his team he's very happy with the way they played he fully expected them to be in a fight he said we're in a fight we got 30 minutes we can still win this fight and then he went on to say you know what we got to get our running game going they're doing a great time uh, double teaming Jonathan Baldwin they're doing a great job of that we got to establish our run game or else we're going to be in trouble that's the adjustment he wants to see guys all right, David, looking at third down and one coming up. Brown hands it off to Clark, the hammer guy, and Clark gets the first down for the Mountaineers. Clark picked up three. It'll be first down and ten. I thought Bill Stewart, simple way of saying it, but his halftime adjustment of saying, I want our offense to play like our defense. That defense, I think, on that first series and has continued to inspire this offense. I think that was well said by Bill Stewart. Brown completes the pass to Arnett. Arnett picks up five. He was working against Chapel. Second down coming up. The whole thing with Jared Brown. Can he set his, you know, Bill Stewart, an old quarterback coach, not a high-profile assistant by any measure, Mark, not the offensive coordinator, gets his dream job here at West Virginia. He's from the state of West Virginia. On second and five, Brown, boy, he had Arnett wide open. And, Bob, sometimes it can be problematic when you got a coach that's perceived as someone with the same disposition as your favorite uncle you know yeah. nice guy approach well mark and you know i think anyone that knows bill stewart sees he's, he's a genuine nice guy a gen a, a, a genuine gentleman don't judge everything though by what you see on those sidelines just because <laughs> he's not running up and down and, and and getting in guys faces he's got some juice to him brown oh. Oh. Complete at the 32 yard line. What a grab by Wes Lyons. He used all of that extended frame, 6 7, to pick up 24 yards. Yeah, this is the guy from North Braddock, PA, just outside of Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's all a 6 7, but how about the body control, huh? Pretty impressive right there by Wes Lyons. From the 33. Line down to the 31 yard line they, got a couple you know a lot of people you know wonder why maybe West Virginia with eight seconds left mark didn't throw the football late pass protection hey they were worried about getting sacked this guy's taking a beating this year but if he can set his feet he can throw the football man. Jeff Brown just trying to Hang around and hang in there. Get this offense untracked a little bit. On the reverse. Not much happening on that play. Number 14, Bradley Starks. Chopped down by Adam Gunn. 
Dunn, one of the leaders for Pittsburgh defensively. And a guy who got his uh, six year of eligibility and has really made an impact getting his master's degree. Third down and nine. At the 25 yard line, it's our net, but that's going to be a couple yards short of the first down. So, on a night, Bob Davy, when we've seen them go for it already twice on fourth down, decision time again. It looks like they're going to send in the field goal unit this time. Mark, you see the escapability of Jared Brown creating that play, but again, running for his life. This field goal from Bittencourt going to be from about 43 yards out. Made his earlier one tonight from 20. At nine for 10 on the season, Mark. Let's it loose. And got it. <laughs> Just inside the upright and good. Antoine Reed with great pressure. Bittencourt just got that thing off, just got it over the crossbar, too. And the SB for the base best fake on roughing the kicker goes to Tyler Bittencourt. Bob, I mean, that was a full somersault. He tried to sell it to the official, but the official wasn't buying. I mean, at least he does his own stunts. You wonder why those kickers spend a lot of time by themselves, right? <laughs> he did a huh? full somersault on that. Yeah. He seems to be okay now. Walking five. <laughs> it's kind of becoming that way for NFL quarterbacks. The way they're getting those rules oh. changed where you can't even get near that quarterback, man. Pretty soon they're going to start going there. Yeah. <laughs> In the 24, it's Ray Graham. He didn't secure the ball last time. This time, a little bit closer to his body and brought down to the 41-yard line. Well, here's what's happening now in Morgantown. Mountaineers leading in the total yardage battle. And here's what's ahead. We'll break down the different styles of offense amongst teams in the top 10. Coach Davey will break that down for us. And one university and many pro teams in the area and the effect that it has. First and ten for Pittsburgh. Stoll hands it off to Lewis, who's going absolutely nowhere. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage by Nate Sowers. Boy, the Big East Conference has really made a move north. We talked about the success this year of Cincinnati at 6-0, 11-0 overall. Pittsburgh just one bad quarter, Bob, away from being undefeated as well. That bad quarter coming against North Carolina State in their only loss of the season. Yeah, and amazing how the Big East Conference now has people's respect all over the country. You know, it was just a few years ago when B.C., Miami, Virginia Tech leave. People are saying, should, should the Big East even have an automatic BCS Bowl there? Right. Pass complete to the fullback at the 42 yard line. Hanoski met once again by Sowers, his second consecutive stop. Yeah, big Hanoski at about 260 pounds. Nate Sowers came up, Mark, and that was an excellent lick. And this West Virginia defense under Jeff Castile, they are playing inspired football tonight. And keep in mind, Jeff Castile told us this week, this is the best offensive team they have seen all year in Pittsburgh. Third and seven. Complete in a first down, or close to it, actually, near midfield. It might be a little bit short, actually. Oh, they spotted back right on the midfield stripe. And that's going to be fourth and about a yard to go. Yeah, Mark, if we could get a chance to maybe look at that spot again. Tickerson made the catch. But this is a decision time for Dave Wanstead. And this crowd realizes right now, Mark, this potentially 
Could be the play of the game right here. But four of nine on fourth down so far this year. And a flag. Yeah. West Virginia actually called timeout. West Virginia, first time out of the half. Bill Stewart says his offense has to start playing like his defense is. Yeah, Dave wanted that flag to be called before the timeout, but the timeout was first. Let's take one more look at that spot. Dickerson makes the catch. Yeah, Mark, he's down right there. Oh, yeah. It's a great spot. Boy, this has been a season of close calls for Pittsburgh and Dave Wanstead as you look at his reaction right there and you look at the turning point of their season. It goes back to that game against Louisville for Pittsburgh when they trailed big time and came back and won their first conference game in the wake of the North Carolina State loss and Wanstead really getting after it right there. The other turning point really for them too, Bob, was the UConn game, they were down by 15 points in the fourth quarter, came back to win that one as well. Yeah, that's a good UConn team, but it'll be interesting on this call. Dave wants that an old offensive lineman, physical football coach, you got the big old fullback, you sell toughness with that big offensive line. Line up and run the ball or play action, I think he'll run it. The toss to Lewis in space, and he has plenty of space. Out of bounds around the 20 yard line and a first down. Lewis turned on the afterburners and McGee gave him a nice block along the way to pick up 30. Yeah, Mark, that was a great call by Frank Signetti, but also a great block by Cedric McGee, the senior right here. Watch him out here blocking in space. And then you mentioned the speed of Deion Lewis. But you know what? A senior wide receiver, Cedric McGee, all the attention Doran Dickerson, Jeff Baldwin get, you have to give this senior a lot of credit for making a block like that. That was the longest play of the night for Pittsburgh, 30 yards and all. Stoll hands it off to Lewis again. This time a game of about three, Robert Sands making the tackle. Mark, just back to that conversation you started on the Big East. You talk about some prime time games. Pittsburgh beats Notre Dame. That was a huge game. Connecticut goes to Notre Dame. Everybody in the country watching that game. Then you had Illinois, Cincinnati today, Pitt, West Virginia tonight, Pitt, Cincinnati next week, which is really, in, in some ways, a Big East championship game like the SEC championship. So some great job scheduling to get some of these games late in the season that everybody in the country are going to be watching. Stall hands it off to Lewis again over the left side. And Lewis tripped up at the 13-yard line. And Lewis already tonight, remember, has set a new freshman rushing record in the Big East Conference. And they talk about number 28 in the same terms glowingly as number 33. Easy. Easy now. Tony Dorsett. I thought I'd push a button there. With a little you. early. A little early. But I'll tell you what now. This kid, he reminds me you have Ryan Williams at Virginia Tech, who's had an outstanding year. Reminds me of Ryan Williams, Ray Rice, just that body stature. But man, he's exciting, Mark. But easy on that Tony Dorsett. <laughs> uh, I had to dust that one off. <laughs> Little bootleg action by Stoll. Incomplete at the 13 yard line for Dickerson, who couldn't squeeze it. Stoll trying to find his roommate, Doran Dickerson, a finalist for the Mackey Award. As one of the top tight ends in the country. Yeah, being quiet tonight, huh? Yeah. I mean, Doran Dickerson, 6'2", 230, about 4'4", four, four, just flat drops that ball. But he's had an unbelievable season. Number one receiver with 43 catches. Now, Man, have to have that one. Now Dan Hutchins in to attempt from 30 yards out. This would tie the game. He's one for two tonight. And he drills this one through to tie the game at six. Some of us expected a few more fireworks tonight with these offenses, but it's all about the D. Back to Morgantown after this. ESB 
ESPN's College Football Primetime brought to you by Mazda's Drive-Off Event, where you can sign off on the best deals and drives of the year. You know, anybody, Bob Davey, can throw a bird in the oven, but it takes real skill to carve it up as we watch the Lacey family here in Morgantown is seen repeated across the country throughout the course of this weekend, this Thanksgiving weekend. I'm telling you, my birds are going to be deep fried tomorrow. Sarah Jones working on it right now. Didn't get a chance to celebrate Thanksgiving with the family yet. And uh, you and Joanne doing yours tomorrow too? Tell you what, big Arizona, University of Arizona, duel in the desert tomorrow. We'll do a little football and then uh, probably go home and watch more football. <laughs> and Sunday, watch more football. <laughs> but real friends don't need let friends eat the way I did yesterday. I, I needed somebody to put a stop on from the two-yard line, tied at six. This is Tavon Austin. And a flag down at the 25-yard line as Austin is brought down right in the vicinity. During the return, holding number 41 on the return team, 10-yard penalty, first down. Hey, Bob, you talked about some of the big games coming up this week in college football. Saturday night, ABC and ESPN2 delivering two full national games. First, Notre Dame-Stanford, or you can see Georgia against Georgia Tech. Both games can be seen nationally on either ABC or ESPN2. Go to ESPN.com, search maps to find the game that you want to watch. And Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC at 8, 5 Pacific, or College Football Primetime on ESPN2 at 8 Eastern. 4.46 to go in the third quarter, tied at six. Devine on the loose. Noel Devine. Incredibly Devine. Touchdown, Mountaineers. That's all it takes. With speed like that, when you crack the line of scrimmage, Mark, it is over. He just runs by Dezico, the free safety, and it's over. How's that ankle? You know what he's doing? <laughs> he's looking back over there at that freshman, Deion Lewis, and says, you know what? It's still my big ease, baby. I'm not giving that rushing title up quite that quick. But how about Mark? He cracks the line of scrimmage, and it's over now. Noel Devine with the decisive blow so far. An 88-yard bolt of lightning here in Morgantown gives the Mountaineers the lead. Back after this. Noel Devine with a big play a few moments ago to give the Mountaineers the lead. Ran 88 yards. One of his many touchdowns on the season. Guy that was really a little bit questionable coming into this game. And his 11th rushing touchdown just a few moments ago. That makes coming from Florida all that way. That makes it worth it, doesn't it, Mark? It does. We talk about seven starters from the state of Florida for West Virginia. Four starters for the from the state of Florida for Pittsburgh. Speed. Speed. There are a lot of good football oh, no. players in that state, aren't there? It uh, was Royce Virginia's longest play of the season. Let's we'll see how the Panthers counter here. Graham on the kickoff return. Out to the 42-yard line. Bob, what was the key on that run? Mark, they run a little trap play. Watch Matson, the guard, on the trap. Bang, right there. Now, you talk about scary. You're DeChico right here, and it's one-on-one -on -one with you and Noel Devine, and it's over. And that's all it was, Mark. A little trap play, they creased the line of scrimmage, and it's unfair. It doesn't matter who that safety is. You're one-on-one -on -one right there. That's a tough assignment. Stalled. Looking for Baldwin. 
And incomplete harmlessly at the 17-yard line. Good coverage there by Brandon Hogan, number 22. But, Mark, you see the same thing. Don't underthrow Jonathan Baldwin. It's six foot five. Get it out there. He's going to win the jump ball, but when it's underthrown, he has no chance. Sets up a second down and 10 for Pittsburgh. Panthers coming in at 9 and 1. Big one against Cincinnati next week for essentially the Big East Championship. With a lot of business at hand here. Lewis breaks a couple of tackles. Still on his feet, and he's got lots of six, but he's dragged down at the 32. And you have to say, these are two teams going at each other, and it's competitive, but these are two tailbacks going at each other, and that's competitive. Because I promise you, that guy right there, that got Noel Devine's attention. Watch Deion Lewis right here. I mean, he runs into his own offensive lineman. The speed, Mark. When he decided to go north and south right there, he's got a burst now. And over 100 yards, Bob, for the sixth game in a row. You talk about the impressive stats that he continues to put up, and that's his eighth 100-yard rushing game of the season. Stall complete, one-on-one, -on -one, and good tackling in the open field that time by Keith Tandy, who has an interception tonight as well. He made it on Baldwin. That's an excellent open field tackle out there by Keith Tandy. And this defense under Jeff Castile continues to play well. Some marquee players in this game, Mark. And for the future, some marquee playmakers on both sides. West Virginia team pretty talented. And uh, this arguably the best opponent that Pittsburgh has faced to date. Nine and one coming in. Yeah, and that graphic right there says it all. That was the storyline. A strong pit offense running the football and a weak West Virginia defense. And Dave wants to just unloaded that headset over there on that pit sideline. Three minutes to go, and Wanstead apparently has delivered the marching orders. Now, he was smiling just a few moments ago. <laughs> well, this is an efficient pit offense. Let's take a look at it right there. Pitt forced the call timeout. Dave just slam dunked that headset. Stoll uh, walking that green mile over the sidelines. But Stoll's consistency this year has really been a bright spot and something that Wanstead takes great pride in. He mentioned that in his meetings with us earlier this week, but still simmering on the sidelines. Both well, these teams have had a week off. Lewis, oh, he got drilled. A big hit to fill the hole by number eight, Keith Tandy. And Glover there as well. Yeah, Tandy and Sidney Glover, you mentioned it. I mean, they stepped up right there. You can feel that one all the way up here. Yeah, let's watch. Deion Lewis going to break the line of scrimmage. There's a pretty good hole there, but bang. Third and four. to Lewis and Lewis got to the edge with a good burst got inside the 20-yard line to pick up the first down he got eight but will it stand there's a flag down on the field looked like they went quick at the line personal foul John Brock 77 offense yep. look at that look Jason Pinkston 77 the big tackle out pulling. Watch him pull around right here. Let's take a look and see what we have. At one high, one low. Yeah. That's 
the first penalty of the night for Pittsburgh, and it places the ball all the way back at the 36. Yeah, it's third and 14 now. Yeah. Joe Thomas was engaged high, number 56, and Jason Pinkston came in low. You said it. Still under heat. Unloads for Baldwin. And he couldn't make a play on it. Underthrown again. Bob, Billy Stoll has had troubles getting it far enough for Baldwin to even make a play on it tonight. Yeah, Mark, in that time, you can see why because of the pressure. You know, he couldn't set his feet and throw the football that distance. I mean, good pressure that time up front by West Virginia. I'll tell you, you have to be impressed. I mean, this West Virginia defense, this secondary is flying around. A little bit of hand contact going on right there. But excellent break, break on the ball by Robert Sands. Boy, they're going to attempt a field goal. This by might... Dan Hutchins of 53 yards. His career long is 45. And it's wide to the left. So the Mountaineers defense proving to be strong and stout again as we go down to David Amber on the sideline. Mark, with every key play made by West Virginia, it is getting more and more hostile in an environment here on the pit sideline. The Panthers are trying to keep their composure. These fans are not making it easy, though. Yelling, screaming, and of course, cheering on their Mountaineer team. And right now, it's working with the momentum clearly shifted towards West Virginia, Mark. Yeah, they're going to get a big boost from that missed field goal, too. And one thing fans do, Mark, is I've coached here in this stadium. They take pride in kind of They'll watch the coach. They watch Dave Wanstead's reaction when he threw that headset. He's real animated on that sidelines upset. That'll inspire this crowd even more to be a factor. I mean, they sense right now that Pittsburgh and Dave Wanstead is rattled a little bit. So, I mean, they're in for it right now. Pittsburgh is in a big-time battle right here, Mark. Yeah, it's not all about making noise. There's a degree of sophistication when they can pick out the mood of the coach yeah. there. Well, what they say is not real sophisticated. <laughs> I promise you that. I mean, it's pretty easy to understand. <laughs> Second and three. Clark again straight ahead, but stopped up. Short of the first down. It'll be third down, about two to go for the Mountaineers approaching midfield. But you talk about this rivalry. Where's Penn State in all this? You know, Pitt doesn't play Penn State anymore. Okay. Penn State doesn't play West Virginia anymore. It's Pitt and West Virginia, which I really believe Penn State, that's a shame that Pitt and Penn State don't play. Yeah, that used to be a great rivalry. And Penn State, West Virginia. A couple of schools separated by about 72 miles. Devine, last time he touched the ball, he scored on an 88-yard run. This time, not nearly as far. Pushed out of bounds a little bit short of the first down it'll be fourth down coming up no gain this is the 102nd edition of Pittsburgh against West Virginia Pittsburgh leads the overall series and uh, Bob you were once a coach at Pittsburgh what do you remember about this series great games brutal crowds down here <laughs> yeah. I mean the crowds are really tough down here but it is. It's a backyard brawl. I mean, they're separated by 70 miles. Every recruit that flies in to see West Virginia, Mark, flies into the Greater Pittsburgh Airport. Okay. So that rivalry starts early now. <laughs> Fourth down and two coming up as the third quarter expires. Bill Stewart said this might be the biggest game of the year for us. Looking for a win when we come back. Welcome back, everyone, for the final 15 minutes under the lights on Thanksgiving Friday here. West Virginia leading Pittsburgh 13 to 6. Pittsburgh ranked number nine. Santa Claus still about a month away. And boy, a Christmas gift for one of these teams would be maybe uh, getting a little payback West Virginia meanwhile for Pittsburgh getting back to as Springsteen saying the glory days yeah it's pretty simple I mean this game for Pitt is about getting to that level that West Virginia once held in this league and for West Virginia it's about Bill Stewart getting a quality win and hanging on to the position they used to be in the big league. so a lot riding on this fourth quarter Mark. Amir's punting here on fourth down it's going to bounce inside 
the 20 yard line at the 18. Let's check in with Reese in the studio. Reese. All right, Jonesy, time for a Sports Center right now. Tiger Woods is in good condition after being involved in a minor car accident in his port near his Florida home last night. He was taken to the hospital, treated, and released. Details continuing to come in will be available on Sports Center as we have them. Alabama trailed for much of the game against Auburn. Greg McElroy hit Roy up church late 26 21. Saban's Crimson Tide remains unbeaten. Sports Center 11 Eastern State Current ESPN News. Well, you talk about a close call for Alabama. And Gene Chisick's Auburn Tigers playing a real courageous game. Lewis out to the 28 yard line. Nice move. And finally brought down by Reed Williams. He picked up eight on the play. Yeah, Mark, you had an unblocked Sidney Glover, who's a good tackler. Watch this. Deion Lewis, unblocked. There's the extra man. He just runs through that tackle. This game's coming down to Deion Lewis and Noel Devine. That challenge. A couple of talented tailbacks from the stamp are trying to on this game. Second and one, Lewis's turn. And Lewis got the first down out to the 31 yard line, picked up four. Yeah, Mark, here it is. And both of them, big third quarters. Divine three carries for 88 yards in the third quarter. And Lewis, nine for 75 in the third quarter. So they're heating up right now. And Divine got most of his on that one long run for the touchdown. First and ten pitch play. Oh, what a spin move. Lewis. Another great move, and he shook Keith Tandy to pick up nine. I mean, Tandy's still looking for him. Well, a great call by Jeff Castillo. I mean, Tandy's going to come. You're going to see him come from out here on a corner fire unblocked. Right there. Spin move. And this guy, Mark, we said it. Tulane and Miami of Ohio, the other two scholarship offers. Wow. Shows us that some of these scouting services can get it wrong sometimes. Yeah. I mean, the kid <laughs> walked his recruiting tape up to Rutgers, <laughs> and Rutgers didn't offer him. It was again between the tackles. And this time wrapped up by Tandy. Tandy made sure that he put both arms around him that time, limiting that gain to just three. But Mark, think of that. This kid paid his way, took his highlight tape up to Rutgers. He doesn't get an offer. And I'm not picking on Rutgers. I've done the same thing. We've all made mistakes in recruiting. But it's amazing again, and it's another example of how all those stars and all those ranking systems sometimes mean nothing. Yeah. Yeah, Dave Wanstead said that uh, as we look at Keith Tandy down in the field for West Virginia, made the last tackle on the last play. Shows it, you know, Dave Wanstead said, I saw four plays on his highlight tape and said, go get him. Let's offer him immediately. Yeah, Tandy with a cramp there, but you're right, Mark. I mean, you look at Deion Lewis. He's not real tall. You know, he's about 5'8", but he's 195 pounds. He ends up going to what? Blair Academy in southern New Jersey. Not many players have come out of Blair Academy. There have been a bunch of uh, other freshmen to have breakout seasons and big debuts on the college football landscape in the past. Adrian Peterson back in the day in 2004 and Michael Crabtree is a wide receiver at Texas Tech now with the San Francisco 49ers LaShawn McCoy who could be here still by the way right exactly left a little bit early and that's the reason the biggest reason why Deion Lewis goes in and rolls early at Pittsburgh because he knew that job was open you know he didn't finish his senior year at Blair Academy he graduated early and enrolled and was there in the spring which you see more and more players doing around the country. Second down and seven coming up after that three yard gain by Deion Lewis. We mentioned earlier, you know, Pitt's going to play Cincinnati for the Big East Championship next week, regardless of what happens in this game. But if you're Pittsburgh, not only is this your big rival, but you want that positive momentum continuing into that game in Pittsburgh next week. Mark, this game's big. And trust this carry and play to Lewis. Dancing around in the backfield, but can't get away from Robert Sands. It's going to be fourth down coming up. 
Robert Sands sticking with it to force the fourth down coming up. On ESPN's Monday Night Football, Tom Brady in New England take on Drew Brees in New Orleans. Two of the top teams battling the Big Easy and trying to make a huge statement in Week 12. Patriots Saints, 8 of 30 on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Third down, pardon me, and seven coming up. Second pick of the night for the Mountaineers. Well, Mark, he must have gotten our message. Phil Stahl of not throwing the ball high enough, but that time he threw it too high. But how about this West Virginia secondary? You're going to see Baldwin on the crossing route. I mean, just completely overthrows it. But the effort by Robert Sands to go up and make that catch. That's an outstanding concentration because Jonathan Baldwin flashed in front of Robert Sands. But the play of Tandy, Glover, and Sands mark those three safeties. There's Brown delivering wide open. Arnett. First down, Mountaineers at the 26. Alric Arnett with the big play for West Virginia. 36 yards in all. The great combination, Mark, of being a scrambler, Jared Brown. Watch him scramble, but also the ability to throw off the scramble. It's tough to stay in coverage when you have a quarterback like Jared Brown that's going to break the line of scrimmage on. Hands it off to Noel Devine, and Devine is pushed out at the 25 by Romeus. Boy, I'll tell you something. That's a big-time play by Greg Romeus. He's 6'6", yeah. 270. Though. He's 260. <laughs> yeah. And he, he played, pretty well. played one year high school football, Mark. He was a basketball player in Coral Springs, Florida. This is the guy that clinched the Notre Dame game with a sack. That's 6'6", 270. And only a junior. Second down and nine. Brown on a little bootleg action. Into the end zone. incomplete intended for lines that ball hung up there for a little bit and Jared Hawley came in to make a play on it. yeah you have the 6'8 Lions on the 5'10 freshman Hawley let's take a look at this yeah he's out he's clearly out of bounds got the football but he was clearly on that white line so third and nine coming up a tenuous seven-point lead by the Mountaineers. Better help those offensive tackles in protection. Devine on the handoff. And a great move. Devine turns it up, but ran out of turf. <laughs> Boy, he does kind of take your breath away, doesn't he? You're right, Mark. Pushed out after a three-yard gain. It'll be fourth down coming up. Hitting cart on. This one's going to come from about 39. He's already made a couple times. Chance to make it obviously a 10 point game. Uh. And he just got it inside <laughs> that upright. And the Mountaineers extending their lead to 10 when we come back. Well, yesterday at the Lacey residence here in Morgantown, West Virginia, gave us uh, full access, not to the food, but to watch some of the Thanksgivings going on. And, uh, this was a scene repeated around the Morgantown area and across the country. They got after it a little bit. <laughs> Still wondering why the uh, pit side of the family didn't show up. But a great time for them and a great time for many yesterday. Well, this game now, it's Deion Lewis's show. But Bill Stahl 
is going to have to throw the football, Mark, obviously, for them to win this game. And he has struggled tonight. 10 for 22, 78 yards, two interceptions. Has underthrown it, has overthrown it. And West Virginia defense has had a lot to they do have, with it, though. They really have. I mean, they have played really aggressive football. At the nine yard line. And still on his feet. Sadler brought down just shy of midfield. Good return as we go back to Reese. Mark, we're just getting started. We got football on the blue coming up the day after Thanksgiving in a little over 20 minutes. Boise State will try to remain perfect all time in whack play against conference opponents when Kellen Moore and the Broncos take on Nevada. Moore, the most efficient passer in the nation. Nevada, the leading rushing team. Kickoff in just over 21 minutes. All right, thanks a lot, Reese. Yeah, Kellen Moore leading the nation in passing efficiency. Flagged down as Deion Lewis is brought down. And interestingly enough, Billy Stahl is number four in the country, Bob, in pass efficiency. But False start, 74 offense, five-yard penalty. Yeah. But not yeah. very efficient tonight no. as a football team. Mark, let me make this point. I mean, you talk about teams struggling with things. West Virginia has struggled with kickoff coverage for two straight seasons. And Pitt with really good field position here. But hurts himself with the penalty. But they just cannot get the kickoff coverage problem solved here in West Virginia. They stole. Firing complete to Baldwin. Nice straight arm, but pushed out of bounds at the 48-yard line by Keith Tandy. Bob, it doesn't take long for fans to get a little upset and say, boy, this offense is predictable, and it's a dinosaur as we look at some of the styles of offense around the nation for the well, top you 10. you take a look. I mean, really, Pittsburgh, Alabama. You watched Connecticut last week against Notre Dame. All fit in that power pro style. So many spread offense. Which, which really, Rich Rodriguez deserves all the credit because he was way ahead of his time when he ran that stuff at Tulane and Clemson. But this pit offense, a power offense mark, but they can throw the ball and they have big play players. Stall looking to throw here. Eluded trouble and got it off in time. Lewis stepped out of bounds. <laughs> Can't come back here. He yeah. stepped out of bounds and acted like he didn't, huh? <laughs> and, Bob, it was interesting to see on your list of the BCS top ten, the styles of offenses. Ohio State at the bottom, they're kind of standing alone in what they do. Yeah, a little bit, you know. Jim Trestle, really a power coach, eye formation guy, but with Terrell Pryor, has made the move to more of a spread. But the one you keep your eye on, and you know what I'm going to say, <laughs> Georgia <laughs> Tech... Mark with that triple option there's going to be some other people go to it. and I know people are stubborn but you talk about the toughest one of all to defend. Here's Lewis tough to defend in any offensive formation down to the 23. And Mark that was a patient patient run by Deion Lewis right there. You know a lot of guys young guys will just run right up into that pack he kind of hides behind it and comes out the back door. Came in this game as the nation's fourth leading rusher and during the course of this evening rewrote the Big East record book, setting a new record for freshman rushing yards. He has 155 with the meter still running. Stull, tough pass intended for Dickerson, who has been a forgotten man of sorts tonight. Mark. It is kind of fun, though, isn't it? I love all the new yeah. stuff everyone's doing, but it's fun to watch those eye tailbacks work, <laughs> right? <laughs> See I mean, the big you kind of miss the just Eric give me a basic ISO lead. <laughs> yeah, the big fullback high the husky in there, but you know the Eric Dickersons, the Bo Jacksons, the Herschel Walkers, Tony Dorsett back there in the eye formation. It's good to see yeah. some of this eye formation stuff. Man. You can always watch classic. <laughs> Second and ten. Baldwin. And Baldwin pushed out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Let's take a look at what's fresh off the presses, part of Football Friday, presented by Wendy's. That of Boise State coming up next. Boy, Bob, just seems like yesterday, September the 3rd, we were out on the blue turf in Boise. They played Oregon. 
The Laird Blunt controversy breaking loose, and Boise State hasn't lost. Miami, South Florida, and Notre Dame, Stanford on Saturday. Third and seven for Pittsburgh. Baldwin. Incomplete. He hit the ground and the ball was jarred loose seemingly. Just a great effort by Antoine Reed. Just staying with it out. Excuse me, Brandon Hogan. And Baldwin getting up slowly. He never really had a hold of the ball. And now from 36 yards out, Dan Hutchins into a 10th field goal. Brandon Hogan, great effort, though, staying with that big, tall receiver out there, getting that ball out of there. This would bring them to within a touchdown. And he drills it through. The margin down to seven points. As Hutchins now three of five from field goals on the night. ESPN's College Football Primetime brought to you by The Home Depot. Visit homedepot.com. More saving, more doing. That's the power of The Home Depot. A look at the dessert table inside the Lacey residence here in Morgantown, West Virginia. They had a great time yesterday during Thanksgiving. And uh, everybody uh, looking forward in the Lacey household to this football game evolving on the field today between Pittsburgh and West Virginia. That last field goal narrowing West Virginia's margin to a tenuous seven points. I'll tell you, these rivalry games now. Tough to win, huh? I mean, they are battles. Pittsburgh at 9-1, and one, and the Mountaineers would love nothing more than to send them reeling and be the second blemish on their schedule this year on the kickoff return. Mark Rogers still on his feet and brought down at the 27-yard line. Let's go back to Reese. Mark, this is the man who will try to engineer an upset of Boise State on the blue. Colin Kaepernick has accounted for 32 touchdowns this year. One of three 1,000-yard rushers for Nevada. Wolfpack taking on Boise State coming up. Kickoff in just over 12 minutes. Yeah, they'd be running that pistol offense out there, Reese. <laughs> i tell you. I'll tell you who was impressive. Texas A&M last oh. night. Mike Sherman. Great job. Drop they have Johnson. turned a corner offensively. They are going to be a good football team in the future with those young, skilled players they have. Certainly are. Ryan Clark. Off tackle, got a couple of yards. Yeah, Gerard Johnson yesterday was on fire. And we have to, how about Colt McCoy? <laughs> As he put himself in position for the Heisman. Did he win the Heisman yesterday, you think? I'll tell you what, Mark, the last several weeks, and then you look at the Nebraska game, he is. He, he put on a show last night. I, I couldn't believe his rushing statistics fast, at the end of the night. Fast, and they took advantage of him. They ran him more than I've ever seen him run him on some predetermined quarterback runs. Second down and eight coming up. Noel Devine with about four yards. It'll be third and about four coming up. Yeah, Colt McCoy with some big yardage yesterday. 304 passing and 175 That's rushing. That's amazing. Mark Ingram, boy, they sto Auburn's defense stoned him for yeah. most of the day today. I mean, it's Colt McCoy's. I mean, it is Colt McCoy's now, isn't it? I would think so. Big third down right here. Jared Brown, the ability to scramble, Mark. Pit controlled pass rush. Looks like they're going to blitz him. They're in man-to-man -man coverage. They need the nation in sacks, but boy, Brown picked it up. And hit his hot receiver, Bradley Starks, for the first down. Jay Brizzle getting it done for the Mountaineers. Mark, he just caught it, took two steps, and let it go. Pittsburgh playing off coverage and man to man. Jared Brown with a big third down conversion. Fifth year senior playing his final home game here in Mountaineer Stadium. Goes of the ball resting at the 38. A little 
Play fake. Brown perfectly placed but incomplete. At the 46-yard line. Hey, Monday Night Football is a great one coming up. Drew Brees and New Orleans taking on Tom Brady and New England. Two of the top teams in the league battling on ESPN's Monday Night Football at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's at 7 Eastern. You know, getting back to Jarrett Brown, you talk about the adversity he's faced this year in his entire five seasons. Bob, you figure anyone that's played basketball here at West Virginia for Coach Bob Huggins, he can handle anything, <laughs> right? You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's pretty good training <laughs> ground right there to handle what's going to come. Give it to the first man through. Well, Devine, Mustakis makes the stop. Nobody fooled on that play, especially Mustakis. Front four, the strength of that Panther defense. Mark, and watch mistake is right here, the quickness. He's just going to run by the offensive guard, swim move. Again, a young offensive line, two freshman guards, but this pit defensive front, impressive now. Another third and long situation. Just don't turn it over, Jared Brown. Got rid of it quickly again. It's complete, but short of the first down at the 40-yard line to Urban Tyler, the tight end. It'll be fourth down coming up for the Mountaineers. 4.44 to go. Both teams with a couple of timeouts remaining. West Virginia trying to snap a two-game losing streak at the hands of their backyard brawl rivals from Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh coming in at 9-1 and one overall next week. Basically playing for the Big East Championship against Cincinnati. But this game uh, hoping to bring out the best in the Panthers. Smith back on his own 20 for the punt. They get a chance to return this. And pushed out of bounds at the 25-yard line. A 37-yard punt. Three on the return. Big finish coming up when we come back. Well, earlier we showed you the Lacey family and inside their Thanksgiving. This is our family. Oh. Last night <laughs> celebrating our Thanksgiving with some turkey and some ham and... Real five. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a good time, Bob. We tore up some bird yesterday. Mostly grand. Some sweet potatoes and sweet potato pie and pumpkin pie. I want to thank everybody on the crew for making being away from home on Thanksgiving. A nice evening overall. We got a great group, had a great year. First and ten, a little over four minutes to go. Pitt's got to get to work. And they call on Baldwin, the number one stunner. As we check in with Reese in the studio, first down pick. All right, Mark, get it right back to you. Boise State getting set to take on Nevada. Kickoff in less than five minutes. Game is going to start on ESPN Classic. So if you're waiting on Nevada, Boise State, we'll crank it up on Classic and then move it here to ESPN2 as soon as we're finished in Morgantown. How about Pitt this year, Mark? Three plays over 70 yards. They had zero plays 70 yards, 07, 08. I mean, this is a down-the-field kind of team now. We have had the offense. This pass complete to Mike Shanahan. Between Shanahan and Baldwin and Dickerson, Baldwin tonight with seven receptions for 77 yards. This is a very balanced and talented offensive group. And Bamba, mysterious why they haven't been able to get on track tonight with just nine points. Well, a lot of credit to West Virginia. I mean, they are flying around on defense. Their secondary has been outstanding. But plenty of time left. You have a 50-year senior quarterback and a lot of weapons. From midfield, first and ten. He's been high, he's been low, but that time Bill Stahl got what we've been waiting for all night long. Jonathan Baldwin shows the speed. Little outside move back up the field. That is a perfectly thrown ball. They beat Sidney Glover. 
And John Baldwin with a six touchdown catch of the year. And we're a point away from having a tie game. And somewhere Larry Fitzgerald <laughs> out in that desert is watching this, Larry. That's the next Larry Fitzgerald potentially now. And Mark, you knew Billy Stahl with all he's been through at Pittsburgh. He struggled tonight, but he wasn't going to go away. And that is a great, great lesson right there. I mean, this guy's seen just about it all in college football, but the big play potential of Pittsburgh, and this guy here does things you cannot coach. Bob, we're looking at a tie game now, 2.54 to go, and uh, yeah, this one could end up on ESPN Classic, the way that things are concluding here. How does West Virginia bounce back what they've done offensively in the last couple of series? Well, Mark, the reason this game is so close, quite honestly, West Virginia has not turned the ball over tonight. And Pittsburgh had a huge advantage in that category coming in. So for West Virginia right now, you have a chance to take it down, maybe kick a field goal to win it. But more importantly, do not turn the football over. That's why you're in this position. But you know what? With a quarterback like Jared Brown, you have two fifth-year quarterbacks. Can Jared Brown now match Billy Stump? We've seen Deion Lewis match Noel Devine. Now it's about the quarterbacks. It's Jared Brown's turn now. Now, he doesn't have a Jonathan Baldwin out there. <laughs> you might want to find one. And, uh, he does have Noel Devine out there. He scored earlier on an 88-yard touchdown on there. There's Brown on the sidelines. Jared Brown waited five years to become the number one quarterback here at West Virginia. And this is going to be Rodgers on the kickoff return. Tate has had issues in the kickoff return game, and this return out to the 33-yard line. And Saturday night, ABC and ESPN2 delivering two full national games. First, Notre Dame and Stanford, where you can see Georgia, Georgia Tech, both games nationally on either ESPN2 or ABC. Saturday night, Presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC at 8, 5 Pacific, or College Football Primetime on ESPN2 at 8 Eastern. A lot of pressure on Bill Stewart, Mark. We mentioned 17 and 7, and that's a heck of a start. But the expectations around here, they need a signature win. Joel Brown takes out his do-it-yourself kit. Runs it up to the 34. Got about three yards on the play. And you see by that call right there. You're in that mode that you want to go win it, but you don't want to lose it. <laughs> you know, the first call is quarterback draw with Jared Brown. Noel Devine back in the game now. Second and eight. Brown keeps it himself, gets the first down, and then some. Out near the 45-yard line, he picked up 10. West Virginia with a couple of timeouts remaining. Yeah, Mark, that little misdirection quarterback run. Noel Devine got a good block from Josh Jenkins, the left guard. Watch 77 right there. Gets enough on Adam Gunn. But it's all on Jared Brown now. Not much of a rush. And he completes the pass at the 45-yard line to Arnett and another first down for West Virginia now keep in mind after this 11 yard gain that Tyler Bittencourt the field goal kicker has a career long of only 45 yards and I say only because they're not quite in that range yet Jared Brown this is why you sat behind Pat White waited five years an opportunity like this throws it away a little bit of heat by Greg Romeus Mark watch this pass rush move by Jabell right here watch the inside move the spin move Jabal sheared man these are some talented defensive ends Jimmy Johnson Dave Wanstead's mentor is sitting somewhere enjoying this man because it's all about that front four Top 
Deion Sanders in motion to the top of your screen. Brown overthrows Sanders. I'm not sure that he can even see him. All the action seemingly going that way. Well, again, Greg Romeus, Mark. If we look at that again, it's six foot six or six foot seven. Kind of smelled that coming. And the old basketball player goes up and makes them throw it over top of him. Watch right here. He didn't even rush. Huh. He knew that was coming, so he's the reason right there that that ball was overthrown. Yeah, that's not fair having a guy that tall and talented out there on the edge like that. Hit all four-man rush, playing their base quarter coverage. Big match up at the top with Big West Lions up there at six foot seven. Third and ten. Brown gonna take off. Brown. Brought down just shy of the 35-yard line. Let's see where they spot this. He rolled forward. I'm not sure they're going to give it to him, though. He's going to about a, be a yard shy of the first down with 1.19 to go. Decision time for Bill Stewart. Yeah, Mark. I mean, this is a big-time decision. Maybe not quite as fast as Pat White, but a great job anyway. Ryan Clark in a tailback out of the eye. They give it to Clark. Oh, it's going to be close. Not sure that he got it. Yeah, Ryan Clark, the power back. I, I tell you, it is really close, Mark. It looked to me like he got it. This is the game right here with just 45 seconds to go. Let's see where that is spotted. If he got it, he didn't get it by much. Meanwhile, the game just underway in Boise, Idaho, between Nevada and Boise State. Can you imagine if you're the head coach on either side, Bill Stewart or Dave Winston? He got it by that much. 6 nothing as Boise State has already scored out there on the blue turf. Mark, how about Jared Brown, though? The big scramble on third down. This is his show right now. This is his time right now. There's Tyler Bittencourt warming up just in case they need him with 45 seconds to go. Divine inside the 30 to the 28. And a seven-yard gain. It would be a 43-yard field goal if they set it up from here. And a timeout called by the West Virginia Mountaineers. West Virginia trying to snap a two-game losing streak against Pitt. Pittport has already made three field goals tonight from 20, 43, and 39 yards out. And his career long is 45. And right now it's 45 yard field goal. So it is right at Tyler Pittencourt's range. And in pregame, that was about his limit. It was 47 yards. Bob, when you look at the situation now, we're talking about a second down and three, 45 seconds to go. How do you manage the game in terms of, you mentioned it earlier, Maybe not trying to lose it, or how aggressive are you at this no, point? No, they're in good shape right now. I mean, play, run the football, get the ball in the middle of the field, at least give your chance, self a chance for a game-winning field goal right now. The lineup out of the eye. Ryan Clark, the tailback. He gets the carry. Stopped outside the 20. Mark, they're going to let this run down. Call timeout and have one play for a field goal, which is a little surprising. Maybe run one more? Yeah, because you are right at his range, but Bill Stewart is taking it down to make or break on the field goal. We saw Bill Stewart do something like this in the first half, to end the first half, kicking the field goal on third down, and they're gonna go for the win here with three seconds to go. Yeah, Mark, that's about as conservative as you can be right there. Just to, like at the end of the first half, he was very conservative with eight seconds left. Didn't run another play. Decided on kicking the field goal. 
Well, it's going to rest on the toe of the six foot one inch freshman right there, Tyler Bittencourt. Yeah, and Bitt with two field goal blocks, Mark, this year. They blocked a field goal against North Carolina State. They actually blocked a extra point against Notre Dame. Remember coaches earlier telling us that they weren't going to let Bittencourt kick the field goal. This was earlier in the season until they got the ball around the 25-yard line. Well, right here, it's going to be placed to the 27. You know Dave wants that is going to ice him. You can see Dave standing over there on the sidelines. And there he goes. He calls one of Pitt's remaining two timeouts. Bittencourt has made three field goals already today. He's three for three. Pitt has one more timeout remaining. Boy, what a finish here in the 102nd edition of the Backyard Brawl. Pitt coming in at nine and one, and West Virginia looking for a little payback for 2007. Well, how about Tyler Bittencourt? You know, put yourself in his shoes. Look at all the people right now depending on you. A freshman out of Springfield, Virginia. All the people, and this is the State University of West Virginia now, Mark. How many people counting on Tyler Bittencourt? And Pitt had good pressure on that last field goal attempt, Mark. I mean, put yourself in this guy's shoes. From 43 yards out for the win for the Mountaineers. Bittencourt. He's excited. He got it. They win it. That's what it's all about, Mark. Look right there. They're not saying Bill Stewart was too, too conservative now by playing for the field goal, are they? Tears of joy. Epitomizing the intense feelings in this rivalry. And their counterparts dejected on the other side. Tyler Bittencourt, you have gone from virtually unknown in the state of West Virginia. There's going to be a lot of little number 40 jerseys pretty soon. <laughs> he ties his career high with his fourth field goal of the night. And none more indelible than that one by Bittencourt and David Ambers downstairs with Bill Stewart. Uh, Coach Stewart, talk about that final call you made to let the clock wind down and then go for that field goal. Well, we did all we we did all we did time. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that we hung in there with the guys. Tyler, we felt, could make it from that distance, but we did not want to leave Pitt any time. Great football team. Since your very first win as the head coach here when you wanted the Fiesta Bowl, you've been waiting sort of for that signature marquee win. What does this moment mean to you personally? Well, it's a great day for Mountaineers everywhere. I'm sorry I can't talk any better. It's a great day to be a West Virginian. All right, Coach Stewart, congratulations. Go rest that voice. Thank you, and God bless. All right, Mark. The game took his voice away. And you hear John Denver in the background, Mark. Rocky Mountain. Scooter Berry, an emotional senior on the sidelines. One of 23 seniors playing their final game here at Mountaineer Stadium. And what a night it's been for West Virginia. Tyler Bittencourt with the final field goal for the win. 1916 the final. Nevada against Boise State is coming up next. There's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Bob Davey, I'm Mark Jones. So long from Morgantown, West Virginia.